Good morning. We are at the book of Jude. The last couple we done, second and third John, just one chapter. Here's the trifecta, because Jude just one chapter as well. It says, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. Okay. James, probably talking about the James that wrote the book of James and was a leader in the church of Jerusalem throughout the book of Acts. If you go to Matthew 13, right toward the end of it, it talks about Jesus' brothers, of whom is named James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. So a lot of them think that James, that James was Jesus' half-brother because, you know, Jesus was born of a virgin, but that don't mean Joseph and Mary didn't, you know, later on down the line. And, uh... Then that one at the end, Judas, they think maybe this is that Jude because he says he is the brother of James, so I don't know. I know that uh, Jesus' brothers didn't believe him while he was here because that one verse said, well, there's another one somewhere that says his brother and believed it not. Anyway, that, maybe that's who we're dealing with here, the brother of James. It says, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you. So that's, that's big. Let's go back to that. You're preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Amen. You got to be called. Not just to be a preacher. You get called to believe. A lot of people don't like that, but it's the drawing power. Remember Jesus himself said, no man can come to me except my father first draw him. It says, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you, I don't really know who he's writing to. It's just a general epistle, it says. I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. That's a good exhortation. Earnestly contend for the faith. You do that by preaching. You do that by walking. And being a good Christian person, not out there causing all kinds of stuff. It says right here, because he's going to show some of these people that I just mentioned. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Before of old ordained. And, you know, that kind of sounds like the, the predestination crowd. People argue up and down about that. There's certainly stuff in here that suggests that. And right here's one of them. They were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Lasciviousness is just like lewdness, lustfulness. And denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance Though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Amen. So that this whole book is going to be putting people in remembrance of the consequences that come from not serving the Lord. Pretty much what I get out of it. And he's talking about, remember how he saved the whole bunch of them out of Egypt. But you see, not long after that, he starts sorting them out pretty quick. They Some get swallowed up, and uh, they, others get uh, bit by snakes. But certainly that whole initial generation, they all died before they made it to the land, didn't they? Except for Joshua and Caleb, it was their children that would go in. But it says that uh, afterward he destroyed them that believed not. And that's why he did, because they wouldn't believe to go in and do what he told them to do. And it says, and the angels, which kept not their first estate, so the angels, their first estate clearly would be heaven, I believe. But left their own habitation. When did they do that? You know, there's a lot of stuff. This is a really short book. It's just one chapter, but you just go one sentence at a time. You can see stuff and go back to other teachings, and we could spend all day just in this one book because he's talking about these angels that left their first estate and uh, kept not their first estate, left their own habitation, and if you go back, like in the days of Noah, those sons of God that uh, mated with the, saw the daughters of men that they were fair and took them wives and produced these giants, a lot of people think that they that was these angels. You know, that's up for debate. Not everybody believes that. 
But certainly there's the teaching that the devil, you know, once was Lucifer and he rebelled and took a third of those angels with him. That's probably what this is looking at too. Who knows what all they did. But if you go, uh, before we finish, Jude's going to mention a man, that man named Enoch that was that walked so close with God, God just took him and he didn't see death. But there is a writing called the Book of Enoch. And as I understand it, it was pretty close to being put in the Bible. It's like one of the last ones that got excluded. And you can read it. It's got all kinds of wild stuff in it. But who knows whether that was really him or not. That's why they didn't put it in, I guess. But Jude quotes from the actual Enoch, whether it was the one that wrote that book or not. And I think he talks a lot about these angels coming down and all the things that they did to try and, uh, you know, they brought all kinds of knowledge to humanity that we shouldn't have had, I think, like abortions and all kinds of stuff like that. I've, I've not read the whole thing. I've just seen pieces of it, but I remember that being part of it. Anyway, these angels that uh, left their own habitation, it says, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. And if you go back and, and compare that with one of Peter's epistles, I can't remember. It's the only time he ever uses the word hell. And that Greek word, Tartaru, Tartarus, that's the only time it's ever in the Bible. And that's where he's talking about here. It's talking about kept in chains of darkness, these angels that kept not their first estate. That's where they're reserved until that great day of judgment. And there's another one. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah. So he used to keep making these examples of what happens, you know, when people live ungodly lives. And Sodom and Gomorrah is really one to pay attention to for the, the world we're living in now. It says, These cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. There's a lot of strange things going on today. Isn't there? It says, They're set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Now, I ain't gonna say nothing here or get into a big long thing, that word eternal. <clears throat> Clearly the fire that came upon Sodom and Gomorrah ain't still burning, is it? So that should tell you something to look these up. Now, I'll get to that one of these days. Probably I've already said it several times. But uh, That word it, translated as eternal can mean age lasting. Anyways, likewise, also, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, speak evil of dignities. Despise dominion, speak evil of dignities. People will speak evil about anybody these days. It says, yet Michael, giving a, a godly example here, these filthy dreamers speak evil of all these things, but Michael, the archangel, when he was contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, with the devil, he didn't bring a railing accusation against him. It says, Durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuked thee. And that whole thing about, I don't know why the devil was wanting the body of Moses, but I'm sure you could get into some kind of out there teaching on that. I've never really looked into it. He wanted it for some reason. And, you know, Michael didn't call him. He didn't speak evil of him. He just said, The Lord rebuke you. And that was the devil. But people will speak so lightly and say awful things about dignities and dominions and stuff like that. He says, But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. What was the way of Cain? Murder. Jealousy. Trying to do it his own way. That's what these filthy dreamers do naturally. They're not looking to the spiritual. It says they ran greedily after the error of Balaam for a reward. What did Balaam do? That was the one that king tried to get him to curse Israel. Balaam was a prophet. He said, I can't curse what God blessed, but what, what Balaam did for reward, he showed him how to get Israel from the inside. He, he showed him how to, if they would get Israel to go after these the daughters of these foreign peoples that had all these strange gods, they would come in and, and destroy them from within. And that's what happened. He says, uh, and perish, these same people will perish in the gainsaying of Korah, who was Korah. He was one of them that came out with uh, Israel as they was going through the wilderness. And he and a bunch of the other Levites that were called to be priests and ministers, 
they got jealous too because Moses was the man and they didn't think Moses, they, they said, you take too much upon yourself. You know, all these people, they're all holy. Why ain't we getting to take part in the leadership and all this? And, and God was going to wipe them all out. Moses interceded. And God came and that's when the earth opened up and swallowed Korah and all his crowd. These are spots in your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water. What's good with a cloud without water? Carried about with wind. Trees whose fruit withereth. That's no good either. Without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. What he's saying, all those people that done all that stuff, and if you're doing that kind of stuff, you're just like them. And what this is saying is you have no life in you. You have a form of godliness, but you deny the power thereof. You're ever learning, but you can never come to the knowledge of the truth. You don't have the real thing. All you have is an outward appearance, wanting to gainsay, wanting to get power, wanting to be somebody in the world. But when you get the real thing, you become humble and you become obedient. It says, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch, here it talks about Enoch. Also, the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints. Why? To execute judgment upon all. And to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds. That's the whole point of this letter, to, to bring to the surface what these people are doing and to convince you not to be following after them. He's convincing them of their ungodly deeds among them all, of their... Uh, They've ungodly committed, and all of their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers. Do you know any complainers? They walk about after their own lusts. Again, it's all about the self. Things ain't going right. All they do is talk about everybody else or complain. It says their mouth speaks great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. So that they think if they admire these worldly people, they'll get some advantage out of it. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves sensual, fleshly, carnal, having not the spirit, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Remember, Paul talked about praying with his understanding, and then he talked about praying in the Spirit, and sometimes his understanding isn't fruitful, but it still is communicating with the Lord, building him up in his most holy faith. Keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some... Have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. So if you see these people that's going down this road, and they're starting down this road, and you know the truth, pull them out of the fire. Tell, tell them the truth. That's how you do it. You can't physically make anybody do anything, you know. But if you tell them the truth, there's a chance you could pull them back. Save them with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Who's that? That's the Lord, isn't it? And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. And that's the book of Jude. Well, 14 minutes for one little chapter. God bless you. We'll see you next time.